Hey guys, this is iTroll at Ix with Rollout Reviews, bringing you another Crossfight Beatemon review. This time it is CB41 Burst Bison. Now we'll set this off to the side and take a look at the packaging really quick. On the front here, we have a nice product image of Burst Bison there with the stickers applied. His user down below, Gunner Arana. And up here we have the Burst Core, the Crossfight Beatemon logo, CB41 Burst Bison, and he is Power Type. On this side, it shows off his trigger and how to hold him. On this side, it shows his functionality in the Break Bomber Tower, and on the back we have all of his parts, a customization, all of his gimmicks, and his stats. Now this is very interesting, and keep these in mind when we take a look at the Beatemon itself. Nine power, which in theory should rival the power of Spike Phoenix. Two control, and one rapid fire. Interesting. Anyway, in the box you get the second style of tool, so you can customize this guy, and one standard Bidama, along with the sticker sheet. Now honestly, I don't apply stickers, but these are super, super cool. These are some of my favorite stickers I have seen. I love the look of them with the gunmetal details there and the, the flames. A very kind of like um, flat red flame detail, which is a nice contrast to that. Um, the little bull emblem there. He just looks really cool with these stickers applied. So if you're into such things, if you do apply stickers on your beat -em on these are definitely ones to put on because they look super, super cool. And here is the beat -em on itself. So first impressions, I think he looks very nice. Um, first of all, his body set. The head part is very good for something like, like a control type or a power type. Um, now, for a control type, you do kind of miss out on the sight a little bit. It does have this bit up here, but it doesn't end up working all that well. Uh, but these horns here are super nice for grip. Um, you kind of hold him like this and wrap your whole finger around those horns. Um, it's very, very comfortable. Uh, he has a little bull head on the forehead there, which is kind of cool as well. The arm parts are a little bit boring, very, very simple. However, they do have this little uh, kind of slot mechanism. We'll talk about that here in a second. And his foot part is, is very simple as well. It's got a lot of forward stability. However, um, there are other foot parts that are arguably better for that, so uh, not all that useful and, well, very simple, kind of boring, just a little bit. Now, as I said before, um, it has these little slot parts here, and these horns can actually come off, and there's a little groove there, and they slide onto the arm section. Now, this connection is very solid. They don't just peg on, they slide in and are very, very secure. Now, you can do that with both sides and kind of give him a little bit of forward support, of forward stabilizer. Now, why you would want this is because the whole gimmick behind this guy, taking a look at the core here, um, first of all, it's it's the same mold as the Spin Leosia core, so it's the first type of uh, core part here and doesn't have the locking mechanism with the power block, so that's worth noting, but it doesn't have a trigger um, spring here. That's very important, albeit not for reasons you might think it is, and I'll elaborate that here in a second, but it also has this very, very nice trigger pad here. You can slot two fingers in here, put a thumb here, uh, maybe put this finger here, or, or kind of hold it in, in some other way um, to just kind of get a very nice grip on it. It's a super nice grip part. You can also put you know two thumbs in here. Um, very snug, very, very comfortable. Um, this is probably the best trigger pad in the system, in my opinion. Now, the whole idea behind this guy is you can kind of hold him from up here with one hand or, or from from the side here and push as hard as you can on this trigger um, without you know having to deal with that spring to kind of get a power shot based on your own personal physical strength. Now it has this little tab up here and this little bit here to kind of stop it from going in too far and once again, that's very important because when we do this power test here, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about why that doesn't work 
all that well. Um, but basically these horn parts here are just supposed to stabilize it a bit more when you're uh, holding him here and pushing as hard as you can. A little bit of forward stability to uh, keep him solid on the ground. Although I don't think that's worth it for sacrificing the horns here because like I said, they make a really good grip and um, this doesn't work all that well because they barely touch the ground and there's only this little bit of um, surface area, so it, it doesn't work in the end. Anyway, let's do a power test, finally. I have my B-Speed V here, turn that on. Load up a marble. It's kind of cool because uh, it doesn't have the trigger, so you can kind of set this in. Load your marble here and then kind of drop it into the chamber, which is which is very cool. Um, but, again, it's all about kind of physical strength, so let's give it our best shot. Three point three six. Spike Phoenix hit, you know, from four to five regularly. Um, no, well, maybe, 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 maybe that, maybe that was a fluke. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's try that again. Let's try standing up this time. Get our, get our full body into it, our full arm into this shot. <clears throat> uh, well, three, 3.36 again. He's not very powerful. Now, now he, I, I do believe he fully constitutes the power type namesake. He, he's not weak, but he's nowhere near that nine score on his stats. That's just ridiculous. Um, and, and you could say, you know, you're just weak. You can't push in that trigger, you know, hard enough. But that has nothing to do with it. Because this little tab here and, uh, and this kind of stop it from going in any further. And then on top of that, the power really is dictated solely on the hold part. Now, obviously, kind of a shot with just your two fingers here pushing like that is going to be less powerful than when you put your whole arm into it, but pushing hard on that trigger only goes so far. There is an indefinite limit to how powerful you can get the shot on this guy because the hold parts don't allow anything more powerful. That's a little unfortunate, and... Because of that, you could write this guy off as being a false advertiser, and therefore being a bad beat -em on But that's not entirely true. In fact, I went from very much disliking this guy for the same reasons that I just explained, to absolutely loving him over the span of a single break bomber game. And I'll tell you why. First of all, let's do a rapid fire test. Let's attach a magazine on here, load him up, and just see see how well he does at getting those marbles out. I don't think he's a one. That's another note on his stats on the packaging that are Totally wrong. That's so off. He's so good at rapid fire. For two reasons. First, he's got this trigger. It very well emulates kind of the same idea that the roll core emulates with, uh, you know, the, the trigger loop. Where, you know, it, it keeps with your thumb. So, you know, you have a very natural in and out motion. And, and it works very well for rapid fire. Very consistent. However... This lack of a spring is also very essential to that because on a normal core, you press it in and you wait for it to come out. The spring pushes that back out. So when timing your shots, you're kind of dictated by that spring. So you kind of have to time it um, along with how fast that springs out and um, that can be a little bit tricky. It's not, you know, hard, but it's kind of an acquired skill, something you have to get used to. This here is also something you have to get used to, but in a different way. Because 
how this core functions is all up to you. You physically load that marble into the chamber, and you kind of have to experience it hands-on, but it gives you such a sense of control. And by control, I don't mean control type. He's, he's terribly inaccurate. Um, that the two in control is, is the only stat point on his box that I actually agree with. But it gives you a sense of, of control over how the beat -em on works. You load that marble into the chamber. You push it out. It makes him very, very good at rapid fire and makes him very, very good at break bomber, in my opinion. I had such a blast using this guy in competitive battle. And once again, I have to say it, I hate saying it because it, it really doesn't convey my opinion all that well. And for a review, I guess that's not a good thing. But you really do have to experience this guy to appreciate him. Yes, he's a false advertiser, a dirty, dirty liar, but that doesn't make him a bad beat -em on And as I said over the course of a single Break Bomber game, I went from more or less hating this guy to absolutely loving him. And I think that says something. So, that is about it, guys, and this is Ix Troll at Ix, signing off.